Hey folks, how you doing? Pastor Jeff from uh, Bible Believer, Believers Community Church. A little bit of interruption, my, my dog uh, Gus put his head up here and you might have got that in the camera, I don't know. But hey, if you like us, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button and hit the share button. It helps us get the word out. Now, as always, you can hit that pause button just as well and you can go get yourself a cup of coffee. Come on back and we'll have us a fireside chat. Last time we talked, we were talking about getting a new heart and the fact that you needed to be born again. That's how you get your new heart. You get born again and being born again gives you a new heart. And uh, you may be saying to yourself, well, you know, I'm not sure I understand all that stuff. I'm not sure, I'm not really sure that I get it. I'm not sure what it means. I'm not sure how to do it. And uh, let's start with this. Before you can get saved, and, and they refer to being born again as getting saved. But before you can get saved, you got to get lost. You have to be lost. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, and you can get your Bible, you can follow along with me if you want to. I'm, I have a lot of these verses memorized. Uh, I'm not gonna be physically turning in my Bible today, but it says in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Then if you flip over a few pages to Romans 6.23, it says the wages of sin is death. You know what a wage is, you go to work, you work, you put in hours, and at the end of the, uh, at when payday comes, they give you money for the work that you did. So it's something that you earn. Well, your sin is earning you a wage, and that's, that wage is death. This proves that all of sin, because everybody dies. There's nobody that's lived on for forever. Everybody dies, and so, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. But you know, when the Bible's talking about that wage of sin is death, it's going much deeper than just the physical death that most people understand about, because there's really two deaths. It says in Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, that death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. That's the death that your sin's wage earned you. That second death is a death that you really want to avoid. Praise the Lord though, the story of God's word doesn't end right there. Cause if it did, we'd just be lost and undone. There wouldn't be a doggone thing we could do about it. But it says in Romans 5, 8, but God commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Praise the Lord, I'm so glad he did. And uh, remember back in Romans 6, 23, we're talking and said the wages of sin is death, but that's only half the verse. If you go on and read the rest of the verse, it says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, it's a gift. There's nothing you can do to make it happen. There's nothing you can do to earn your way out of it. There's nothing you can do to make it right, you got to accept the free gift from the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't earn it. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You go over there to Titus chapter 3 verse 5, it says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So what do you do? What do you do? All those verses sound good, but what do you do? Well, the Bible tells you what to do. It says over there in Romans chapter 10, verse nine, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Two things have to happen. Something has to happen with your mouth. Something has to happen with your heart. We're gonna talk about that in a little more detail, but verse 13 says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean? 
doesn't say confess to the Lord Jesus Christ. It says confess the Lord Jesus Christ. You do that by saying, Jesus, I confess that you're my Lord. You are God Almighty, and I'm confessing you. That's confessing with your mouth, but that's only getting you halfway there. The other half is believing in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead. You see, Jesus died, he was buried while he was in that tomb for three days, his soul went to hell to pay for your sins. You gotta believe that. And that he rose again the third day victorious over the grave and over sin. What a wonderful thing, amen? So here's what we can do real quick. I can lead you in prayer. You can pray the best way you know how and just ask the Lord to save you. Confess that he's your God and that he's your Lord and believe in your heart that he raised him from the dead. But I'll go ahead and pray with you right now and you can pray with me and, and listen. There's nothing magical about the prayer. It has to do with your mouth and with your heart. The words, there's nothing magical there. But let's go ahead, let's, let's say a prayer to the Lord. Lord God, we come to you knowing that we're sinners and that we deserve to go to a devil's hell. But we confess you, Lord, as our God. We accept your free gift of salvation. I believe that you rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And I believe that you paid the price for my sin and I accept that gift. Lord Jesus, save me and take me to heaven when I die and I praise you for it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now listen, salvation is a no-so salvation. It's not something that you have to guess about. It's something that you can know and most churches don't want you to know because they want to have some kind of a control over you. I don't want any control over you, but let's look just real quick before we end this thing. Let's look at 1 John. 1 John is right back to the back of the Bible. It's just in front of Revelation. Look at uh, 1 John chapter 5 and let's look at verse 11. It says, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. See, you can know it. I know I'm going to heaven when I die, and it has nothing to do with me. If it was based on me, I'd be splitting hell wide open, uh, going there and just burning for all eternity. But see, it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with the Lord Jesus Christ and the fact that he loved me enough. He commended his love towards me that while I was yet a sinner, he died for me. And now I have eternity in heaven with him because I accepted that gift. That gift means nothing if you don't accept it. Won't you accept it? Pray that prayer. Say it the best way you know how. Ask the Lord to save you. Ask him to, to come into your heart. Confess him as God and believe. Believe in your heart that he rose the third day. Till next time, God bless. We'll see you then.